Hello, Chuck Williams. How are you? I'm great. Uh, you have no idea how like epic and like ecstatic, humble. Um, th these are but a snowflake on the top of the iceberg of emotions that are inside of me. The emotions aroused by being on the Dash Tailed Spotlight. <laughs> yeah, this 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 event is very epic for me. Like in my journey with Bitcoin. Yeah, this is a this is a like a opening chapter of a whole new book. Well, shoot. Well, we're going to get to that journey with Bitcoin, it sounds to me. Before we do, uh, go ahead, Chuck, and tell us what it is that you do in the Dash Core team. Yeah. So um, you, back in Jan or December last year, announced that uh, Dash was hiring UI developers. And um, being a follower of cryptocurrency, I said, I can do that. And I'm a UI developer, so definitely I contacted Andy signed on and in January started basically, um, that was when we were getting ready to ramp up for the 12.1 release. So the website had to be revamped or updated and that was the bulk of my work basically through January and February and then through part of March. So I'm still fairly new to the team, but um, my goals at the same time are to bring an understanding and empathy of users to the development team basically. Well, that sounds pretty much like Evolution's primary goal, which yes. is which is the back end people um, cannot be in charge of the front end stuff. And mm -hmm. so, OK, so first of all, I think you used a couple acronyms in there that maybe not everyone would be familiar with. When you say like UI or UX, what do those words mean? Sure. Um, so user I is the user interface. These are the pixels on your screen. These are the buttons that you click, right? User experience um, UX is um, a bit more esoteric. It's a bit more uh, encompassing. Um, user experience are the, uh, is the, well, so if you imagine the space between the mind and the screen, in this case with all software, that's generally going to be the user's experience. However, there may be many screens that a user experiences, for instance, Dash. There may be devices, there may be um, uh, any uh, handheld objects, um, you know, computer screens, websites, all these spaces um, all encompass uh, this experience. And it's my goal to understand the patterns that exist um, that, are, that, that can be boiled into principles of interaction for all of these environments and that's the experience that's the user's experience now honestly if dash were to go into physical spaces that would also extend into the use the the uh realm of user experience such as dash offices or you know dash personnel who are outreach personnel you know ha giving them flows and formats to talk to people brochures uh, assistance devices or materials those kinds of things creating a holistic um, uh, or uh, helping to promote what is the brand and message of a thing. Right. Um, these are that's the play, that's the space where like interior designers play, and um, graphic designers and visual designers they they work to understand these uh, desires, these emotions, and create an emotive experience. In my case, through interactions. Wow. I think that's the first time I've ever heard a tech guy use the word emotions. This is going to be a good interview. <laughs> so what is your background that you know how to do these things? Um, hmm. Or, is, I, did, or did you just teach yourself? I mean, it's not like I went to YouTube school, yeah. right? So. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I, I, I thought about this question, and, I, and I'm not sure how to like keep it short and sweet or give you the long version, but I figured since this is kind of my introduction to the world, I'm going to give you the slightly long version, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, and, what, and you can edit and cut it however you like. Okay. So what it boils down to is, you know, when I was a kid, my dad bought an IBM PC Junior. And one day I said to my dad, I want a strobe light. And he said, no. And, and he said, in fact, go do something with that computer over there. I'm nine years old and I was really upset. I, and so in my angst, I picked up the basic book for that IBM PC Junior, and I learned how to make the screen blink black and white. Okay, I taught myself how to write basic code to make the screen blink black and white. By the end of that day, I had it blinking 
and I could control the speed with the up and down arrow keys. And then by the next, the end of the next day, because it's summer, um, I was able to get it going uh, to change color by going left and right. And um, so I had made my own strobe light. And in that moment, I said to myself, oh my God, like if I could take technology and do this, and I was into art and drawing at the same time, I realized if I could take art and computers and put them together and make money doing it, like that would be success for me. So I consider myself extremely lucky that at the age of nine, I was able to understand like, this is my purpose. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take art and I'm going to take computers and I'm going to put them together and I'm going to make money doing it. And that was it. <laughs> and so my, every, ever since then, I've basically been doing that. Um, you know, I've had careers in 2D animation and 3D animation. Um, I did uh, courtroom demonstratives um, for a period of time. But even around that and consistently throughout all of that, I've always been doing front end web development for whatever company I've been employed for. Um, and so, you know, I've had a, you know, 20 year history of speaking to um, corporate types, stakeholders of various natures and end users, and basically synthesizing all of these various needs into user interfaces. And I've, over the course of these past couple of decades, developed some specific principles and practices that help me to extract the information I need to deliver the best possible, most valuable experience. Um, and some of these practices have been put into place. For instance, one of the, you might know me from such applications as the Shutterfly photo book application. I led the development team on the original version of that. So you go to shutterfly.com, you order a photo book, you upload your images. That whole experience is something that I was deeply involved in from an implementation perspective. Um, and I also worked with the uh, stakeholder group to put together a project plan for that whole thing. So um, that's one aspect. That's, that's basically where I play. So now when you are working, is it that you come up with the visual? Say we're talking about uh, the evolution web presence. Right. Do you like make a sketch and come up with in your mind the exact sort of like, I don't know what it's called, like functionality tree, like this button takes you here, which then takes you whatever. So do you yep. like design that and then basically you give your design to coders and they make that happen? Yeah, so it's um, so the that's one of the things that I would do and what you just described, I would call a user flow. Um, so I would take um, uh, you know, and there's a number of ways to kind of present that sort of thing. And user flows are very common. I advocate for those very heavily in most environments because they tend to become um, an entry point into understanding the whole of the system as they grow over time. Um, so yeah, that would be something that I would do. I would, I would, uh, I, in an ideal world, I would first have some kind of interaction with users and say, what, what? where are your... <laughs> you want to know what users want by asking yeah. them or watching what they I like? I know, crazy, right? Chuck. Yeah, Okay, I know. okay, so you would start, so, tell me about that process. Yeah, so, um, you know, the, the, I would go, there's a number of different ways to do that. Um, you can go to a Starbucks and say, hey, we have this app or we have these screens. I'll buy you a cup of coffee if you'll sit down and just click through and tell me how you feel while you're doing it. And so we can, and that's, that's a really, that, I don't do that very often. That's a rare kind of thing. Um, and there's been some scenarios where, you know, the company that I've been contracted with has paid for full on user studies where you've got cameras on the computer, watching the eye movements of the user as they're clicking through the application. And you're, you're, you're analyzing their frustration. You're pausing the screen and say, look at that. That's not happiness. That's frustration. And then you say, oh, where are they on the screen? And you make those associations and you can see the emotive journey as they're going through these flows. So again, and I, that's, that's an ideal world where you have a lot of research money up front. Mm -hmm. um, and that's typically not something that most companies want to invest in. So it becomes um, a, a place where you have to advocate for the users to the business. And I have this kind of Venn diagram that I typically draw in these scenarios where you've got the business or organization goals on one circle and you've got um, the user goals on another circle. 
And another circle becomes the technology goals. And right in the middle is where all of them meet, the business goals, the user goals, and the technology goals meet in perfect form and function. And that's my target. That's where I want to go. So if the organization pulls away from the users and says, we're not doing user research, I'm going to say that's going to cost you. If the tech team, or the IT team says, oh, we can't do that because yada, yada, blah, blah, you know, I say, well, you know, that's going to cost users, you know. And if we go too much toward the users, well, that might be overly expensive to the business and overly difficult for the technology group, right? So there's that happy medium where you're trying to work them all into the right place. And part of that is user research, but also part of that is the business research. Like, what does the business want? And then you have to say, okay, what does the technology team want also? And so that's where that's, that's, that kind of work take week, takes weeks and months, not days you know, so um, that's that's where I'm working right now. Yeah. So that segues perfectly to my next question, which is what does Dash need? What are you what what, what hellfire are you raining down and in what yeah. way? So as I mentioned in January and February, it was mostly about the website, getting that up and running, um, you know, making sure that the wallets were accessible, that everything was presented in a way that was at least, um, you know, made sense from an information architecture perspective. The but website I wasn't... looks nice, by the way. Oh, yeah. Not entirely me. Like, uh, so oh, okay. um, to, be, to be absolutely clear, um, the visual design, I honestly, like, I kind of suck at visual design. Okay. And visual design is the part where you just make things beautiful. There's, there's perfect space and there's, mm -hmm. you know, perfect form on everything. Mm -hmm. um, what I would do is I would look at something like a pretty picture and I would say, okay, here's how we can make it work. We need highlights over here. We need transitions over here. We might need a slight animation over here so that the user isn't confused and gets lost to guide them through this process. I'm going to propose a wizard flow here rather than a, um, you know, a single form page. You know, there may be a lot of different options. Again, I have a toolbox of things that I might propose in certain situations given the principles that I'm trying to employ. Mm -hmm. So what's Dash needing from me right now? Yeah. Um, what I see um, after having interacted for this period of time with the team, um, it's a great team. So awesome team. This is probably I've, I've worked on, I think at last count, 43 different development teams on different projects over the course of my career. Mm -hmm. so many of those simultaneous. This team is extremely responsive. It's the first decentralized team. Well, not the first entirely decentralized, but um, as decentralized as this. It's the most decentralized team that I've ever worked on. Mm -hmm. um, and even so, it's very responsive, um, very thoughtful. And the team itself is providing, um, they, they, I think there's an understanding that we have a platform. We have something of a, of a golden egg, and we know that there is this golden egg inside of this goose. Right. And we don't want to kill the goose. So right now, what I'm trying to do is nurture the goose. I just want to feed the goose as as meaningfully as possible. And how does that manifest? That manifests as bringing understanding to the development team. Let's align our goals so that we can most fulfill what the users need. And there are certain team members that are um, doing just that, identifying at a very specific level. This is our number one target. Now we know that uh, Evo is the end game. I think e evolution is that's the that's the that's the end game. And then how do we get there? Because there's got to be some intermediate steps along the way that are bringing the users value. So that's what we're trying to um, articulate and refine right now. Okay, so you are working then on on improving the Dash user experience before full-blown like evolution release? Am I understanding correctly? Right, so evolution I think represents um, the core of Evan's ideas that mm -hmm. um, he uh, you know, has recognized as necessary for, mm -hmm. um, for, for his vision, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's any disagreement among the team, like that's where we need to get to. Mm -hmm. But I think the challenge is, you know, there's, there's a lot of tech and there's a lot of UX and a lot of interfaces that need to actually come, that need to come together because, you know, that, that the, while the prototype that has been promoted is extremely valuable to say, look, this is where we're going and we're getting buy-in from the user community, the technology community and the organization, right? The business, right. the users and the technology, right? So we're getting that buy-in and we're aligning visions, but 
I think one of the challenges that I've personally experienced in my career with those kinds of things is that those prototypes, while beautiful, often create expectations that either cannot be fulfilled or shouldn't be fulfilled because there may be uh, better ways that haven't been understood after having thought through platform and implementations and regulation and government agreements and contracts and data speeds and all these technological constraints that that can hold you back. So um, so what I will do is like Tron, I will fight for the users, right? I will come and I will say, look, tech guys, I know that this is hard, but can we do this and this and this? Because these are the most important things. Look, organization, I know that it's going to cost some money or it's going to be a challenge or, you know, whatever the thing is to do this thing. But but organization, if we can do this, we will win here and here and here. So it's it's part of it. Part of my job is articulating the ROI to the business and the technology team on behalf of the users. Um, but another part of my job is actually implementing those interfaces once we've agreed that this is the right path. And uh, in my experience, it's generally a bad idea to write too much code before you have an agreement because refactoring those kinds of things can be very costly. I see. So now are we talking about uh, like, are, are you talk, are you thinking of ways that like the Dash Core wallet can be improved or? Absolutely. Okay. I'm working directly with Snog Cell on a project. Well, I don't know how much of this I can make public, but we are working together specifically to leverage the platform that's in place okay. to enhance these experiences on the user uh, for the users. Um, and we're in the process of evaluating the most valuable experiences to bring to those to the users in those environments. Hmm. Well, that that is funny to think about because it, you know it was like the QT wallet. Um, look that Ryan used in his Miami presentation to to illustrate a parallel of you know what a web browser looked like in, in 1994 or whatever and yes. you know because, I mean yeah the dash core wallet looks like you know that still yes <laughs> yeah and that is exactly the 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 case and I think one of the things that we have team agreement on is that we're, we're trying to bring forward a stack that's going to allow us to go to multi-device platforms simultaneously with one code base. Um, I think that's going to be a very valuable thing. Um, the Dash QT wallet may be enhanced with these um, UI implementations, and we're going to see how we can integrate those. And there's some, so there's a lot of technology pieces to work through with that. Um, but I think we have um, uh, we have a lot of great people in place, and I think we've made some very important decisions, both philosophically and technologically, that are going to accelerate us going forward. Mm -hmm. And now you mentioned uh, Snogcell, who is John Kindle, whom I spoke with uh, recently. Is there anyone else you work with closely? Yeah, so I, I um, have at least weekly contact with Andy Freer, um, uh, daily con contact with uh, Tungfa for the mo well, hmm, at least a few times a week with Tungfa online. I'm very um, involved in the Dash.org website, just making sure that that builds and, main and, and that it's maintained. If any issues come up that I am able to solve, I try to solve those from a technological standpoint, just so like MooCow doesn't have to deal with it. MooCow handles a lot of the build stuff on the on the server machines. I don't have server access, but I can work on the code enough to make sure that it builds appropriately. Um, so you know, if Tungfo doesn't have the chops, then I then I then I'll take a crack at it and make sure that it's going and the blog posts land. Got it. Well, this is all very fascinating and, and certainly a good deal of information you've shared I did not know. So thank you for sharing. Um, mm -hmm. Before I let you go, do you have any like social places that you uh, care to be contacted at? Like, are you on the Slack, for example, or Twitter? Yeah. So both Slack and Twitter, I'm Chuck Williams 37. Okay. And th either of those would be perfect. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, happy to have made your dreams come true by being on Dash to Tail Spotlight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>